Eight South Carolina GOP leaders have endorsed Donald Trump for president, going against the state's former governor, Nikki Haley, ahead of the crucial state primary next month. Nancy Mace is one of those South Carolina Republicans endorsing the former president, and she joins me now. Congresswoman, good morning to you. So Nikki Haley lost good in morning. New Hampshire, but by a smaller margin than expected. So do you think that that result last night will help her in South Carolina? Because that is what she is hoping for. South Carolina is Trump country, and he is crushing it right now. And number one, I want to say that Nikki Haley ran a great race. She made it deep into the playoffs, but the playoffs are now over, and it's time to start the Super Bowl. We have got to take on Joe Biden right now if we're going to take our country back. We need to reverse every bad policy that Joe Biden created, whether it's inflation, whether it's the economy, immigration, crime in our communities. By every measurement, Donald Trump made our nation safer and more prosperous and stronger. We didn't have these forever wars that Joe Biden started. And right now, look, we're in a proxy war with Iran based on the administration's decisions to bomb the Houthis without coming to Congress. Um, everything was safer and better under Donald Trump, and that's what the American people want. That's what South Carolina wants, and he's going to win big here. Nikki Haley's campaign manager said of the race in South Carolina, South Carolina elected Nikki as governor twice against the odds. The people of South Carolina know Nikki's strong conservative record because they lived it. And then Haley, during her speech last night, she said Donald Trump is going to have a harder time falsely attacking me in South Carolina because they know me. They know I cut taxes. So, Congresswoman, what about that? This race coming up in about a month is the first one that she's going to face where she actually has a record in the state. So that really raises the stakes. Well, I, I've never seen anything like it in South Carolina. The number of people that I have spoken to, and I, I stayed on the sidelines for a long time before I decided to endorse. I believe Nikki Haley was a great governor. She's run a great race. And South Carolina likes Nikki Haley, but they love Donald Trump. And it is overwhelming by every measurement everywhere across the state, in Charleston, South Carolina, to the upstate. He's winning by 30 to 40 points because of his record of a strong economy, because of his record of peace overseas and never and none of these endless wars because of his record and being strong on immigration. He has that record. People trust him and they want to go back to the time that Donald Trump was president because they were they were wealthier, they were more prosperous, they were safer. They felt safer here and around the world and that's what matters. Yeah, I was uh, y your endorsement took some people uh, by surprise because after January 6th you did have some harsh words for him and then in turn he had some harsh words from you. Now you're one of the key <laughs> players in South Carolina to endorse him. Him. So what was that decision for you personally? Why did you make it? Well, I'm the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. If I worried and cared what people said about me, I would not be where I am today. And look, politics is a blood sport and people, you know, th these races can be can be ugly. But at the end of the day, when I look at Donald Trump's record and what he was able to accomplish for America, putting our country and her people first, and when I've talked to voters, I've spent months now listening to voters in my district and across the state. Donald Trump is who they want to beat Biden. And it, it couldn't be any clearer. This was not a difficult decision. This was an easy call because I'm listening to the voters I represent. Well, you are listening to the voters, and that's why I'm sure you're going to have uh, an answer to this next question. It is interesting that in Iowa and New Hampshire, the number one issue was illegal immigration, even ahead of the economy. What are people saying in South Carolina? What's going to drive them to the polls? Depending on the kind of the kind of district you're in, whether it's purple or red, immigration could be the number one issue. Uh, the, the economy and immigration are the top two issues. Abortion is always going to be up there in swing states and swing districts. But every town is now a border town. Even in South Carolina, our law enforcement have arrested members of the MS-13 gang. There are fentanyl overdoses every single day. Every every state's a border state now because of the influx, the millions and millions of illegal aliens Joe Biden has allowed into this country with no end in sight. Under Donald Trump, this was not happening. People see that. They feel that. Even Democrats in New York and Chicago, they're angry at Joe Biden for what he's done to their cities. It's all his fault. Well, limited polling in South Carolina, but the latest shows that Trump, Donald Trump, like you said, is up by about 30 points. So Nikki Haley has her work cut out for her, she, and she's got about a month to do it. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Always great talking to you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.